Good morning. I'm Jack Berryman, ACSM historian, and we're here this morning talking with uh, Walt Thompson as part of our ACSM's Distinguished Leaders in Sports Medicine and Exercise Science video series. So thanks, Walt, for coming in. Thank you, Jack. Busy days. <laughs> it is, it's been very busy, yes. Um, I, I just wanted to start off, if you could tell us a little bit about uh, your academic appointment now and where you're at and what you're doing and and uh, you're very busy with ACSM currently so maybe tell us a little bit about that sure and then we'll drop back and talk more about your early career yeah sure well right now I'm an associate dean for graduate studies and research at Georgia State University uh, we have 54,000 full-time students at Georgia State now so it's uh, and we're located downtown Atlanta so you can imagine that uh, when classes are in, in session, uh, we kind of take over downtown. How many Atlanta. graduate programs are you, uh, are we you have, looking at? Yeah, in our college alone, and there's seven colleges, we have about 17 graduate programs. So you're an assistant associate dean right. for the whole university? No, just for my college. Oh, for your college. Yeah, okay. I would never take that. I, I wonder. <laughs> I think, how, you don't have time for anything else. No, it's but, uh, an associate okay. dean for graduate but, studies. But you, research, but, but yeah. you said 17? Yeah, yeah, 17 graduate, graduate program? programs. Wow. Yeah, wow. yeah. And, and what is your college? It, uh, our college is the College of Education and Human Development. Okay. Uh, we have our our tradition has been in teacher education, educator preparation, mm -hmm. uh, but over the years we've uh, increased the size of our kinesiology and health department, for example, which has exercise science, which now has a thousand undergraduates. Wow. Yeah, wow. Uh, and a couple of hundred graduate students. So we recognized that about two years ago that uh, we needed to pay more attention to the, our non-teacher education mm -hmm. piece of the college. So we renamed the college, and it was a great move because now they get kind of like this equal <laughs> uh, attention. Is that your home department then, Walt? Yeah, my home yeah. department is the Department of Kinesiology yeah. and Health. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I hold academic positions. So you can, can you still continue to teach and work with students, or is it? so much on the administration side now that yeah. you've had to give up some of that. Yeah, the, the downside of uh, going to the dark side <laughs> is that uh, you, you don't have time to teach. I wondered, yeah. But I still have uh, uh, doctoral students. I still mentor oh, good, doctoral students, uh, much to their chagrin <laughs> at times. <laughs> but uh, I do have, uh, I have actually three academic appointments, one in the School of Public Health, uh, one in the Department of Nutrition, which is in this, the School of Nursing and Health Professions. Which is where, where Dan is. Dan uh, Benedott has got, he actually has an appointment in nutrition, his primary and, appointment there. And in, and in kinesiology right, and health, yeah. Right, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, so that way they can't keep track of us all that much. <laughs> you keep moving, right? Yeah, you keep moving. Are, are you able to uh, have time to do any of your research, or do you have to give that up, too? Yeah, never. Uh, I never, never give that up. In yeah, fact, uh, this past year, we're, we're very fortunate. I was the, the principal investigator on $5.8 million oh, of wow. grants. Wow. Uh, so f to support our, pro our projects, just over the past five years, we're well over $16 million. And for next year, 2017, uh, we already have $5 million. Fantastic. Yeah, of, of new, new grants. As a faculty member and a dean, that's an that's good news. Well, right? my dean loves that because <laughs> <laughs> it really helps with, with his bottom line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's very neat. Well, um, tell us a little bit now about all this stuff going on with ACSM. Uh, Publications Committee ending, President-elect, I mean, yeah. I don't know how many yeah. other things you've been doing over the years. Yeah, but. well, first the election, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> it's, uh, it was a surprise to me. I mean, anybody who runs for president or vice president, you know, they're, they're the ones that have had the greatest investment in ACSM, uh, and not just for a year or two or a decade, but usually a couple of decades. In my case, I joined ACSM in 1978. Uh, and I've been to every meeting since then, except for 1979 when it was in Honolulu. Yeah, well, I've never been to Hawaii either. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, so you know, when you have that much investment and somebody asks you to run for yeah. vice president, yeah, it's, it's rewarding. quite an honor. Yeah, uh, but then when you're elected president, it's like, wow, you know, you look at all these past presidents 
and you say, yeah. there's no way that I'm in the same camp. That's what that. Larry Armstrong told me, too. He says, I don't want to talk with you yet. <laughs> I've got to think about this a little bit. Yeah. You know, I, you know I, let it sink in. Yeah, it was about a, uh, when, when I got elected vice president, uh, now three years ago, uh, I went into the, at ACSM headquarters, there's a president's room. Yes. And you've been to the oh, president's yes. room. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you know better than anybody the history of ACSM. And when I walked into the president's room, and they have all these photos of all the past presidents dating back to 1954, yeah, before even I was born. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you say, oh, how cool could it be to have your picture there? Yeah. Right? And then I, well, the reality is you never will. <laughs> <laughs> but we, you know, when I was a, an undergraduate at Wake Forest in 1978, uh, one of my mentors, Henry Miller, oh, was absolutely. was ACSM president. Yeah. You know, and to me, he was you know like this really famous guy well, God, that I would God like figure. to be like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then when I went to Ohio State, Ed Fox was my mentor. Oh, gee, yeah, you you had some of the good ones. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, then I got went off on my own <laughs> and had to create my own kind of legacy. Well, you know, you you brought up the elections, you know, and you look at those ballots, Walt, and everybody on there is good. I mean, everybody there could win. Yeah. Oh, on the ballot. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. on the ballot. Yeah. You know, In fact, I, I wouldn't say they're good. They're great. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just it's like well. Who do you vote for? Yeah, you know, and that's the toughest thing, Jack, uh, with the election. Uh, and I actually saw some advice because the person that I ran against is a very, very good friend. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that's part of the reason why they don't tell you who you're running against. Oh. Uh, because they before the ballot. Comes yeah, because out. if I had, if I had known who I ran against, I would oh, say no. I'm I didn't know it. that. That's a good point. Yeah. So they don't tell you. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, when the ballot comes oh. out, then you say. Oh, man, oh, if I had yeah. the opportunity to say no, I would have. I, no, I totally understand. Yeah, but the, the good thing is, and I got some great <laughs> advice uh, from Angela Smith, a former president. Yeah, sure. Because uh, I was concerned about it, uh, particularly about the continuing relationship that you have with somebody. Yeah. Uh, and I asked Angela, and she gave me the best advice. She said, when you run for president, you are going to run against a friend. And that's precisely what happens every year. And, and there's really no, there's a loser, but there isn't really. There's and that, that's loser. what you worry about, yeah. you know, I think. Yeah. That's a good point. So looking at it from an outsider, you look at the ballot the same way. I mean, okay, both of these people are great. Yep. Who, who am I going to vote for? Yeah, right, right. <coughs> yeah. At, at the end of the day, somebody has to win, somebody has to yeah. lose. Um, but uh, the, the person I ran against, we had that conversation weeks, months before the election. Oh, that's nice. And uh, in fact, we, we, had, we were at a meeting in Indianapolis and, and we walked around, the, they have a little canal there and at the end of the canal is, is a lagoon. And so we walked around that thing twice. Yeah, just sort of. <laughs> just talking about yeah, you know, what, nice. what would happen if, right? Yeah. I don't think anyone has ever taken it hard or and dropped out or felt that bad about it. Over the years, uh, you know. Yeah, there there yeah. have been. Oh, there a, have. A, there have been a couple of people. Uh, look, I didn't. I would have, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I would have felt really bad, uh, but I would have felt good for the person I yeah. ran against. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, you you invest decades. Yeah, in in that, maybe getting there. So. Yeah, and, and you try to you know, I mean, you try to position yourself so you're, you know, you're in a position to run, yeah. but you never know. Uh, let, let's. You mentioned it a little bit, but I, we, I want to get back to publications and your some of your visions as president-elect and yeah, that sort yeah. of thing. But so you mentioned uh, Wake Forest, and uh, could you just take us through? So where'd you grow up? Uh, high school? Uh, yeah, that, yeah. That kind of I, well, you know, I, so I, I've spent a lot of time in the South. Lived in the South, so they, they call me. Uh, it's a it's a nice term, it's an endearing term. Okay. Uh, but they all call me damn Yankee. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and the reason for that is because I, I was born and raised in New Jersey, uh -huh. northern New Jersey. Okay. Uh, when I was 18, I left New Jersey, went to Wake Forest uh, in 1974. Uh, I love my family. I love to go back and visit. But if I could meet them all at Newark Airport yeah. and, and say hi, give them a hug, and then get back on a plane to go south. <laughs> Nothing against the Northeast. I love the Northeast. Uh, but the South has uh, really been good to us. Did you play any college sports? Yeah, I was, a, I was a sprinter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was a great experience, too. 
Honestly, I didn't take it all that seriously. At the time. Yeah, well, because I majored in fraternity for three and a half years. <laughs> that takes some time. Too. It takes some time and it takes dedication. Yes, it to does. To major in fraternity. Endurance. Endurance. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, the, the only reason that I graduated Wake Forest is because I, I met my wife uh, there. My, at that time, it was my future wife, and she was a straight A student. Straightened you out a little straight bit. Straight A student, and she reminded me second semester, senior year, that uh, you have have to graduate. <laughs> so I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> so uh, how did you run into Henry? Yeah, so Henry was uh, our medical director for the cardiac rehabilitation program at Wake Forest. Uh, yeah. When we, when, when you go, when you do a master's degree at Wake Forest, you, it's a very small group. When I was there, it's only six master's students. Oh, and today, yeah. now decades later, it's only eight. So it's a very small group. Uh, so the, the faculty pay a lot of attention to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had a cardiac, one of the first cardiac rehabilitation programs in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and Henry was our medical director. Uh, and I have to tell you a really funny story about Henry. Uh, so I, this uh, graduate student who became my wife later on, uh, she was the, like this guinea pig for us to do venipuncture. Mm -hmm. And uh, Henry was teaching me how to do venipuncture. <clears throat> and uh, so, Dion had her, you know, we had the tourniquet around her arm, and I stuck her. And you know, when you stick somebody, a little bit of blood comes down mm -hmm. the tube before you put the vacutainer in there. So as soon as we, uh, we, I stuck her and I saw that blood, I turned around and high-fived Henry, oh. right? And Henry's going, way to go! <laughs> and I turned around, and because the tourniquet was still on, she had blood oh, coming wow. down her arm. And she, and she said, guys, yeah, I think you need to do uh, something here. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> celebrating. So, yeah, so, but that was Henry, you know. He yeah, was, he's, he's a, great, a great, guy. great guy. Yeah. So you did your master's, and then what was the next stop? Yeah, uh, so in December of 1979, uh, there wasn't a lot of people. Oh, sorry. By the way, you had mentioned it earlier, but it was at Wake Forest in 78 that you had your first uh, ACSM meeting. That's right. right? Yeah, 1978 in Washington, yeah. D.C. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, stayed at the Iwo Jima Quality Inn. That sounds like a <laughs> hot spot. That sounds like, well, that's where graduate students would end up. You know, Six in a room. We, yeah, we couldn't get into the, uh, the headquarters hotel. It was much too expensive, so we went across the river to the Iwo Jima Quality Inn, and that's where we stayed. So I'm sorry to interrupt you. So you, you then you went for your Ph.D.? Yeah, no, there was uh, the, So in December 1979, Noel Neekin, uh, a physician at Swedish Covenant Hospital, uh, one of the pioneers in cardiac rehabilitation was searching for a program director. Uh, so uh, he had a very good connection with Phil Wilson at oh, the University yeah. of Wisconsin yeah. Lacrosse. Yeah. There were two places where you would get graduate students that had a clinical experience, Lacrosse and Wake Forest. Mm -hmm. So uh, Noel called uh, Phil and said, I, said I, I need somebody to be my program director. My program director just quit. Right? And Phil said, I don't have any students. They're not graduating until May. He said, you need to call Paul Ribisol. Oh. He has a, so uh, Noel called Paul, and Paul told Noel, I have one student graduating. That was me. <laughs> wow. So Ribisol was there then, too, yes, at yeah. Wake Forest. Right, right. Yeah, I remember him very well. Yeah. Uh, Another pioneer in cardiac rehabilitation. Yeah, absolutely. So in January of 1980, we moved to Chicago from North Carolina. Okay. And uh, I was there probably probably two years, uh, and I was doing some teaching at Northeastern Illinois University, mm -hmm. and I loved the, the university environment. So uh, I decided I was going to resign and go someplace to get my Ph.D. So I started talking to different people, and, and I talked with Ed Fox, and Ed oh. said, you know, you got clinical experience. Guess what? I want to start a cardiac rehab program, so I'll give you a fellowship, pay for everything. And where was he? At Ohio State. Yeah. Uh, so I, I got accepted and was all behind the scenes. I went to Noel and I said, look, I, you know, I love my job, uh, love Chicago, but I gotta get this PhD. Mm -hmm. He said, well, come with me and we'll talk to the CEO. So we went downstairs, talked to the CEO, and he says, we don't want you to quit. He said, we'll give you a leave of absence. So I'm thinking, oh, this, well, they're not gonna wait five years <laughs> for right. me. Yeah. So he said, how long do you think it's gonna take? I said, you know, I have no clue. I've never done this before. I don't know. I haven't had that conversation with Ed. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a, a one-year leave of absence, and at the end of the year, we'll do kind of a check and see where you are. If it's going to take another year, then fine. Uh, but, you know, if you can get done in a year, 
That'd be great. Who's going to do a PhD in a year? Yeah, so I, I had that same thought. So I went back and I talked to Ed and I said, you know, can I do it? He said, yeah, you can do it. Oh. We're in the quarter system. So I took 21 hours a quarter. That's the equivalent of seven classes. Yeah, that's huge. So I took seven classes in wow. the fall, the spring, and the summer, right? Finished all the coursework. At the end of, the, uh, at the end of July, I took the comprehensive exam, passed the comprehensive exam. How, I don't know. I told you it wasn't a good undergraduate <laughs> student, but something to click. Uh, and then went back to Chicago, collected my data, and graduated in June. So all you had was months. your your dissertation left yeah. to do. So I finished it in 18 months. So th did you use data then from your your job, basically? To, yeah. Well, we had the... access to cardiac patients, yeah. uh, and I was they, they had this brand new technology. It was called two dimensional echocardiography, which you know is. Is out. way out, <laughs> decades <laughs> out now. But it was this brand new technology, two-dimensional echocardiography. Yeah. So we actually published the first upright mm. exercise, ac acute exercise, with patients with transmural myocardial infarction. Mm. So we were able to, able to actually, actually visualize visual. yeah. the, the oh, heart absolutely. muscle. So we looked at uh, cardiac output. We looked at stroke volume, actually measured stroke volume. Was that your dissertation? That was then? my dissertation, oh. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty neat. It, it was, you know, it was fun, but yeah. you know, trying to get the dissertation. It was in the days when we didn't have email. Oh no! So you not. know, we had somebody type. If it someone's had a typewriter, you make a mistake, you do the page over. You know, I made a lot of mistakes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to ship it back and forth. Yeah. Uh, the sad thing, saying. though, is uh, in April first, nineteen eighty-three, and I was to to graduate that semester. The sad thing is, Ed Fox died. Uh, and it just so happened that, that I was down in Columbus at the at the time, and uh, he died. He was 44 years old. Oh my heavens! Yeah, and uh, that was two weeks before my dissertation defense. Yeah. Bad timing. <laughs> really bad timing. I could have killed him. <laughs> <laughs> but he but, took care of that. But, right? Yeah. So I, you know, the, the, that was on a Friday, April 1st, 1983. Uh, the funeral was on Tuesday, and at the funeral. I had two people, two very important people, come up to me and say, and said to me, that uh, I, I know you're down a committee member. I haven't been on your committee, but I'll serve on your oh, committee. Nice. And one of Ed's best friends is Bob Bartels. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob came up to me at the funeral and said, "We're going to go forward with this defense. It's going to be in right. two weeks, and I'm going to be your chair." Oh, that's nice. I said, wow. Was D Dave Lamb wasn't there yet? Was he? Dave came after Ed. Yeah. 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 Well, we're, we're quickly running out of time, as I knew, but I wanted to spend the, the last remaining time on um, the publications in, in the sense that under your leadership, ACSM now has five journals. Mm -hmm. That's right. And um, some ideas may be going forward for your uh President-elect, so next year's program, right? Is right, I have right, that right? Right, and then, yeah. So it's really a three-year It is a three-year <laughs> commitment. It's, it's actually three and a half years because it started back on March the 9th. When after I got the, the election. Yeah, right after the election, I got the results on March the 9th, and all of a sudden, you know, you're getting all these communications from AZSM day yeah. and night. Yeah. So well, maybe we should focus on the last part. Um, just on what your vision, maybe what things you want to do for the, maybe for the program next year. Or yeah, uh, it, the it's, college as a whole. Yeah, it, it's impossible to separate yourself from your previous work. And I spent six years as the chair of the publications yes. committee, and we did, uh, we launched the translational journal of the American College of Sports Medicine just a, a, two months ago, mm -hmm. uh, and it's doing really, really well. Uh, we are going to be announcing the launch of another journal. Uh, this year that we've been working on. Uh, it's top secret, so I can't tell you. I was going to say, I haven't heard of that yet, Walt. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a very nice addition to the, the publication's portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, uh, I'll just tell you, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be an open access journal. Uh, every society is doing it I was going to say, I've seen so many of those Yeah, everybody's popping doing it. up. So, so we're going to do it. Uh, we're working through the details of that. Uh, but, it, you know, we have such great science being submitted to our flagship journal uh, w and with a, you know, somewhere between a 16 and 18 percent acceptance rate. <laughs> 
we have to let a lot of good science go. Yeah. So we think that uh, if it's not translational uh, and if it's, and if it's not idea. practical, you know, we have this other thing. So we're, we're still working on that. Uh, our book portfolio, we have 30-something titles now. Wow. We're launching uh, two new books next year. Uh, a nutrition book. I was going to ask you if Dan's is one of those. Yeah, Dan's is one of those. It. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sports nutrition. That's going to be a neat book. It's going to be a great book. Uh, and the second book we're going to be uh, releasing probably in 2018 uh, is clinical exercise physiology. Mm -hmm. There just isn't a lot of clinical exercise physiology books, mm -hmm. so we decided why not ACSM <laughs> authored one. Uh, and it's going to be yeah, a substantial yeah. book. So for the uh, the presidential initiatives. Uh, there are really two. One is that I, we do a lot of international stuff, but it's it's really not coordinated. And if it's somebody's going to a meeting, you know, can you represent ACSM? So it's and Larry uh, had one of Larry Armstrong had is one of his initiatives to enhance the experience of international members. What I like for us to do is to have more of an international influence. Mm -hmm. So not just going to the meetings, but going to the meetings and playing a substantial role. So that's what, and particularly in developing countries. I talked to Ron Mon yeah. earlier this morning, and he, of course, he's heading up the yeah. International International Committee. Relations Committee. Yeah, right? and he was, I'm sorry to interrupt, but he, he was talking about, it's exciting. Yeah. It really yeah. is. It, yeah. It, 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 it's in, we're going to do it in a more coordinated way. Mm -hmm. you know, so at the end of these next three years, uh, I don't want to say that, that ACSM is going to be the go-to international mm -hmm. society. I don't know if we can get to that point, uh, but I certainly want us to have more of an international influence. Mm -hmm. And the second initiative uh, is something I'm personally interested in, uh, and that is uh, paying more attention to people and to athletes with disabilities, oh. both physical and intellectual disabilities. Mm -hmm. Uh, as you know, I've been a member of the International Paralympic Committee since yeah. 1996. Yeah. Uh, and I've been on the Sports Science Committee for almost 20 years. Uh, and I've, we've been able to get some programming onto the, uh, the, into the program mm -hmm. for ACSM. Uh, but next year, we're going to see a lot more of that. That's great. So yeah, it, so the focus is going to, it's going to be, every president has their own little sure. <laughs> personal nice. initiatives. So the, the corporate initiative is going to be the international influence, and the personal is going to be to uh, to, to provide more programming for people with physical and, in, and intellectual disabilities. Mm -hmm. The first step is this MOU we, we're announcing today at this meeting uh, with Special Olympics. Yeah. And we'll just have more and more of those. And, and part of your tenure is going to be the big capital campaign, too. I guess. Yeah, uh, thanks for the reminder. Go, going. <laughs> <laughs> just one more thing, right? Yeah, it's going to be fun because uh, it's going to it's going to give a us good an opportunity. opportunity. Yeah, it's going to be a great opportunity for us to showcase the really exciting programs that ACSM has. Yeah. Well, anyhow, uh, yeah, we're out of time already. Walt, thanks so much. It's my pleasure. Thank really you, Jake. Thank you for doing you. this. This is Thank really you. important.